TJ, the amazing atheist, asserts all sorts of bullshit about Aspergians and autistics as true and factual. Yeah. He doesn't even bother to provide any reasoning for his crap. He just goes right ahead and uses his platform to pretend that he's an expert uh, and spreads all these uh, vile and disgusting stigmas about us. You know, bullshit that has been debunked to death years ago. No evidence and no reasoning required. You know, get a load of this. But anyway, it says autism tore our family, whatever. So because someone reported on how autism tore a family apart, guess what that's responsible for? Mother arrested for death of autistic son. Yeah, because some fucking newspaper or magazine or TV show decided to cover the story of some people's lives who were messed up by autism, that's responsible for the mother killing her autistic son. No, TJ, we are indeed heavily stigmatized. A shit ton of people do believe that we're this, um, this incurable disease and that we're suffering and that we're in pain or, or, or that we're you know, uh, drooling invalids that are stupid or incompetent, you know, that we can't even tie our own shoelaces or some shit like that. You know, I come across this online all the fucking time. You know, it amazes me that you can just so casually dismiss that and pretend that people aren't influenced by that crap. Okay, then let's have a look at some news stories on parents that kill their children. Maria Lutz, 43. Fernando uh, Manrique, 42. Their 11-year-old daughter, Elise, and 10-year-old son, Martin, were found dead from carbon monoxide poisoning on the 18th of October in uh, Sydney's northern beaches. Police suspect the engineer father rigged up pipes to allow poisonous gas into their Davidson home after Mrs. Lutz uh, threatened to divorce him and raise their nonverbal children in Colombia. Mr. Campos said the parents loved their children profoundly, but said at times they felt it was impossible and would constantly worry about what would happen to Elise and Martin when they were older. So they aren't influenced at all by these disgusting stigmas, are they TJ? Yeah, all right, let's have a look at another one. A jobless father who killed his autistic son by slashing the 15-year-old boy about a hundred times pleaded guilty to manslaughter at uh, the, the High Court on Wednesday. Choi Sin Hung, 61, claimed he was getting old and feared that after his death, no one could take care of the boy. Choi also intended to kill himself, the court here. But no, they're not influenced by that crap. That's not even slightly possible, according to TJ, the fucking autism expert. Um, maybe she's just a psycho bitch. Or maybe... It's because raising an autistic kid is hard and she just got frustrated and did the wrong thing. You know, every time a story like this drops where another parent murders their autistic child, um, you have this litany of comments actually sympathizing with the fucking murderer. Yeah, people talk about it as if it's okay to murder your fucking child, saying that, oh, it's understandable or that um, it must have been so hard to look after them. Yeah. And here we have fucking TJ preaching and spreading around the same bullshit. Let's say for argument's sake that there are AS kids that are in fact burdens on their parents. Okay? Even if they are, yeah, that simply isn't a justification to fucking murder them, TJ. Hey, there exists um, right now neurotypical um, kids that aren't on the spectrum um, that are indeed a burden to their parents. Yeah, my brother, he has kids, and um, he complains about how hard it is all the time. Yeah, and and they're all um, neurotypical kids. Um, yeah, but worse than that, um, there are kids that lie. 
that cheat, that steal, do drugs and vandalize and, and trash places, you know, yeah. is that then justification to fucking murder them? Okay, and say, oh, well, it's okay because they were such burdens. Okay? Do you seriously consider that to be a legitimate defense? Okay, well, well, no, no, it isn't. Okay, that's fucking disgusting, TJ. Yeah. But hey, you know, for some strange reason, it's only okay when we're talking about the murder of AS kids. You know... It's not the fault of the fucking magazine or the newspaper or something else that just reported on the fucking hard truth that raising a kid with autism is challenging and difficult and can be a, a, a strain on your fucking life and your relationships. Now, once again, TJ asserts that AS kids are significantly more burdensome on uh, families. And once again, no reasoning and no evidence given. So um, I just don't have anywhere to go with it. You know, all I can do is just dismiss it as nonsense. But here, he spouts even more bullshit, claiming that autistic kids cause strain on relationships, except that it's crap that has been debunked years ago. The 19th of May, 2010. Parents of autistic children often hear that the divorce rate in families with autism is 80%, but a new study debunks that figure as a myth. There weren't really any significant differences in, fam in terms of family structure when you consider children with autism and those without, says study researcher Brian Friedman, PhD clinical director of the Center of Autism and Related Disorders at the Kennedy uh, Krieger uh, Institute of, in uh, Baltimore. In fact, what we found is that children with autism remained with both biological or adoptive parents 64% of the time, compared to children in families without autism who remained with both biological or adoptive parents 65% of the time, Friedman tells WebMD. While the figure of an 80% split-up rate among parents of uh, children with autism is often talked about, Friedman says he searched for the original study and never found one. It may have been originally from pure speculation that was um, brought up again and again with no solid evidence. Yet, here's TJ, the amazing fucking autism expert, spouting complete and utter crap that was thoroughly debunked seven fucking years ago. Maybe we don't want to admit that. Maybe that's not a nice thing to fucking say. But in the words of Audrey too, but it's true, isn't it? No, no it isn't, TJ. Yes, it's fucking true. No, no it isn't, you stupid fucking moron. You're saying that reporting the truth leads to bad stuff. No, that's not what people are saying, you fuckwit, okay? When people pretend to be experts, and go around spreading bullshit about us, it heavily stigmatizes us and causes uh, all sorts of problems for us, TJ. Okay? That is what people are saying. Well, you know what? If reporting the truth does lead to bad stuff, then so fucking be it. Because the truth takes precedence over your need to micromanage the fucking world. Except it's not true, yeah? And dispelling vile and disgusting uh, uh, stigmas and debunking bullshit is not micromanaging the world. So basically, because TJ, the amazing uh, um, autism fucking expert, wants to be as delusional and as arrogant as he pleases, we're left having to deal with the fallout of being stigmatized. We're the ones that have to bear the brunt of it. And the reason why people get so pissed off about this sort of thing is because you have all these uh, celebrities and pseudo-celebrities pretending to be arbiters of truth and pretending to be fucking experts on the spectrum when they don't know the first fucking thing about it and essentially using their platform to spread uh, this bullshit and stigma. Uh, you have porn stars 
like um, Jenny McCarthy going around spouting crap about the horrors of vaccines. Oh, how your NT children will magically transform into AS children as soon as you inject them with these horrid vaccines that are just chock full of toxins. Oh my God, they're full of mercury and shit, guys. Okay, and as a result, the anti-vaxxer movement uh, still remains prevalent, even to this day, you know, despite the garbage being debunked to oblivion. You know, yeah, that's why it pisses people off, because complete and utter bullshit gets signal boosted and gains traction because of uh, um, celebrities that don't know the first thing about us. Now, TJ, the amazing atheist, he has no small following. Okay? He has over a million subscribers, yet here he is doing the same fucking thing as Jenny McCarthy, you know, pretending to be an arbiter of truth, pretending to be an expert on the spectrum, and using his platform to spew all sorts of bullshit that he pulled straight out of his fat ass. Okay? And just as it was for uh, Jenny McCarthy's fans, you, have, um, you, you then have all of TJ's adoring fans, uh, this shit ton of people that just outright agree with it. Yeah, no evidence required. Yeah, TJ doesn't even provide any reasoning for the garbage he's spouting. Yeah, yet such an incredible amount of people just nod their empty fucking heads and just agree with it unquestioningly. So let's have a look at TJ's fans um, justify this complete and utter crap. Yeah, because apparently it's too hard for TJ to provide any kind of uh, reasoning or evidence. Bullshit. A kid at about eight can start taking care of themselves. This is not the case of the majority of Spectrum people. Of course it's harder. We aren't talking about self-diagnosed autism that the entire internet has. So, to try and justify that nonsense, you have this guy outright um, lying and saying that kids are self-sufficient at the age of fucking eight. Yeah, could you imagine it? Yeah, an, an eight-year-old child driving to work and coming home to pay the bills. You're a fucking moron for making up such crap. Moronus Radek, you're a fucking idiot. Of course, raising an autistic child is more difficult than raising a normal child. And yes, I just insinuated that autistic people are not normal. That's because they're not. They're a minority and therefore not the norm. So here he states that we're a minority, but then asserts that because we're a minority, we're therefore more difficult to raise. Okay? We are indeed a minority, and so are black people, left-handed people, um, blue-eyed people, and so forth. Yeah? Do you honestly um, believe that it's more difficult to raise um, a black child, for example? Yeah, simply because of the um, skin pigmentation means that they're a, a minority. Yeah. Well, no, that's not a valid factor. It's just non sequitur bullshit. Yeah. You can even put TJ in the category of a minority. He also defines not normal as just being part of a minority. Well, where I come from, calling someone abnormal or saying that they're not normal is basically the same as calling them a freak. I don't know if this guy views us that way or not, or, or whether it's just a problem with how languages are used in different places, but do understand why a lot of people will write you off as an arsehole when you call people not normal or, or abnormal or what have you. And then he ends his stupid comment with, Take your triggering somewhere else. This is an amazing atheist video, you fucking faggot. Oh, so it's not appropriate to criticize people whenever they make uh, stupid assertions that are outright bullshit. You know, it's not okay to criticize your Lord and Master TJ. You know, sounds like a lot of dick sucking from a sycophant. Now, I did a bit of searching on Google uh, just for some kind of um, reasoning or evidence to substantiate this burden on our parents nonsense. And the best thing I could find was an article showing that parents of autistic children, uh, they earn less um, because of a greater financial 
burden that comes from uh, the extra expenses of um, education that an autistic child would have over an NT child. For example, for therapies such as speech therapy. However, the vast majority of AS children um, do not need such therapy, such as um, speech therapy, you know, meaning that the need for speech therapy and the like, you know, actually being an intrinsic part of the spectrum, is highly debatable. You know, as is the um, autistic child being the cause of such speech problems themselves. For example, if an NT child has bipolar and requires therapy for that, you wouldn't then conclude that NT children are a financial uh, burden that require bipolar therapy. Yeah? And you wouldn't conclude that the, the child caused the bipolar to uh, occur because they're an NT child. No, no that's not accurate. Yeah? Because not every NT child has bipolar. Therefore, uh, simply being an NT is not the cause of bipolar. If it was, then the vast majority of NTs would have bipolar. Uh, you would instead conclude that bipolar is separate from a person's neurology and that the bipolar itself comes with a heavy financial burden due to you know, extra therapy costs involved and whatnot. And that would be more accurate. So, of course, you wouldn't conclude that um, AS children that need speech therapy are thus a burden. but just for argument's sake, let's say that the need for uh, speech therapy is part and parcel of the spectrum itself, that every AS person needs speech therapy for some reason, I don't know, um, which is um, not the case, obviously, but let's just say it is. Even still, uh, it's not because the child is a burden, but rather that the uh, infrastructure in education is just not there, okay, because our uh, public education systems just aren't up to par okay, and don't cater to such situations. So the parents are left with turning to private education where they have to pay through the nose just to make up for the uh, 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 inadequacies in our education system. And people mistake that as uh, the child being a burden on the family when in reality, they would be in the same situation if there were inadequacies in, the edu in education when it comes to NT children. Okay? Therefore, it's not the fault of the child, but rather a lack of infrastructure in uh, the public education systems that we have. You know, I'll read you a um, paragraph from the article in question, and you'll see that it illustrates my point. Joshua's therapies, including speech, musical, and occupational therapy, cost about five grand a month. Holy fuck. 85% of the cost is currently covered by a government grant, but the grant will run out this summer, and the family's insurance policy won't cover Joshua's therapies, Lara said. We don't know how we're going to afford it, Lara said. While public schools offer autism therapies, Joshua's school does not offer the type of intensive therapies he needs, Lara said. For instance, the therapies provided by Joshua's school are not one-on-one, -on -one, Lara said. A new study highlights the unique financial burden faced by families of children with autism, like Lara's, the burden is particularly significant for mothers, the study finds. Despite the fact they tend to um, have completed more years of education, mothers of autistic children are 6% less likely to be employed, and they work, on average, 7 hours less weekly than mothers of healthy children, the researchers say. I don't agree with the uh, distinction of healthy children here, where NT children are supposedly healthy and AS children um, are then not healthy. It's simply not accurate. You know, AS people are not unhealthy by default. You know, we're just as healthy as NTs are. Thank you very much. Yeah. As such, um, I just don't think that this is the best phrasing to use here. But anywho, we don't think that autism creates more of a strain on the family per se than other chronic conditions of childhood said study researcher David Mandel, Associate Professor of Psychiatry and Pediatrics at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine. I think the reason these mothers are leaving the workforce is because service system for children with autism is so fragmented, Mandel said. 
Healthcare and workplace policies need to recognize the full impact of autism and alleviate costs for families with greatest needs, the researchers concluded, writing in um, March 19th issue of the Journal of Pediatrics.